Thank you very much. Can you all hear me okay? Great. Um, thank you for coming. And uh, because we have a, a live streaming audience, in addition to yourselves, and maybe even the one or two people who have not been to one of these classes before but are here in person, I just want to give you and the people at home just a little bit of an idea of what goes on here. I, I've been here for three weeks, and I've had the great pleasure of working with 20 singers and six pianists, and we've worked on songs and opera, a little bit of oratorio, pretty much everything in the range of possibilities for a singer and a pianist. And uh, the people singing today and playing today, I've worked with all of them, but I haven't worked on the material they're singing or playing today. So uh, this will be a surprise for both of us. They have no idea what I'm gonna say and I don't know how they're gonna sound. Um, I was a student here in 1964, if you can count that far back. And, uh, thank you. I don't actually remember that, it's just as part of the, no, I remember it very gladly, actually. And uh, here I am, 50 plus, 50 years later, uh, on the same stage, but in a different capacity. In those days, it was called a Bravanel Hall, probably some of you remember that. Um, what else do I want to say? I want to thank a few people before we get started, because, you know, things like the festival that goes on here, it doesn't give itself. It doesn't take care of itself. It takes devoted, generous people uh, to make it happen. And so um, today's class is dedicated to Patty and Nick Weber. <laughs> and it's, it's presented in memory of Lola and Albert Gallo, and I'm told that their son, Ron Gallo, is here today. Is that true? Yay. Yeah. And, and this, this gentleman is a big fan of the vocal program here, so major points for that, okay? <laughs> Are you from the Gallo Wine family? No? Okay, all right. Uh, anyway, enough of talking, and uh, let's start with James and Christina, who are going to sing some Schubert for you. I should say too that I've told the three people who are perform the three duos who have two songs each that I'm only promising them one song. If we get to the second piece, that's great. But I think they understand that.
thrilled. Um, we had an hour together. I don't think you were playing, Christina, right? But, uh, James and I had an hour together a few days ago, and I was not on this piece, and I was really on his case about uh, supporting his voice, getting his body involved. Uh, I, I even stuck my fist in his stomach and said, come on, work against me. I, all kinds of very inappropriate things were going on. And uh, look at you today, my God, every single note. <laughs> It's, it's really like he's you know, wearing a, a spandex something that you're pushing against. Really, seriously, you had color all the time. And the, when he first sang for me, he had color when he was singing loud, but not when he was singing less loud. And now, you're, you have, like your shirt, you have that much color all the time. I'm really, really happy about that. And I don't, I don't know if you consider that harder or easier or what, but it's the only way to do business, seriously. Okay, yeah. so print that in ink. Okay, let's talk about first, how does death get in this room? Christina, since you have two thirds of the song by yourself uh, and the introduction, we would never know there was a maiden and we would never know there was a fast tempo coming, we would never know any of that. So that's death, I assume, sneaking into the room. And then, then James sings the part of death and then you play the amen to that, okay? So how does, Je how does death get in here, in your imagination? Does he open the door and survey the girl and wait till she sees him, or how? Uh, floats in. Floats in, through a closed door. Yeah. Or how about under a closed door? How about like cyanide gas under a door? <laughs> Something like that, you know? So that she has, I'm gonna use the she, she has no idea of what's happening, right? Mm -hmm. Super. Do you feel you snuck in? She could play softer. She could play softer. I, I'm not saying it's easy, yeah. but I, when, I try to, when I play this, I try to play inaudibly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you do it? I did notice that she didn't have her left foot on the soft pedal. Number one, that's ridiculous, okay? <laughs> Your left foot should be in China. It should be so much on the soft pedal. Come on, scare us with the dynamic. Amaze us with the dynamic. Pretty good. How about half of that? Is that possible? Uh, uh. How about half of that? No articulation, nothing. I prefer that, okay? <laughs> if I have to choose, okay? Not an idea of a crescendo, nothing. And if you know Christina, you would be saying, what's wrong with Christina? That she plays like that. It doesn't have shape, it doesn't have color, it's not here, it's creepy. Good, wonderful. Now exactly when do you see her, see him, James? Great. So I, I really, part of this is the, the visual of the thing, the, the theatricality of it, huh? Yeah. So are we putting death on the floor? Maybe creeping in like gas, slowly rising. Okay, all right, fine. Okay. Now, you're, you're crying out for your life, mm -hmm. right? That seems a very conservative speed to save your life. The piece is written in cut time, mm -hmm. so that includes the fast tempo. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we listen to the piano part, can you play the Floriba part? So I don't know that I'm right, but for me, that's the, women, the woman doing <laughs> as we play it. It's not notes at all. It's right. heavy breathing and please and all that stuff. Can we go a lot faster? Sure. Yeah. Great. It's easy to play, right? Okay. Two bars. Oh, let's be serious, okay? Yeah. You don't see him? Good. Whoa. And you see him! Right, so we have 
three times, don't disturb me, don't molest me. He has two of them, and then she has the third one. I have never understood why people slow down. Don't hurt me, don't hurt me, don't hurt me. <laughs> and every time I perform this, when I'm in Christina's uh, rule, I, I have to argue with the singer, could we please keep this going? Because look, we're getting to the seam where the character shifts to the other character. Yeah. So you both are bumping the girl's atmosphere toward the death's atmosphere, so then there's no black and white in this thing. And all we have here is black and white, seems like to me. So you're adding all this gray area, or beige area, I don't know, whatever color you want to call it, which isn't very theatrical, I have to say. And the third Rühre mich nicht an, which you don't get to sing, should be just as hot and just as desperate. And why don't you get to sing it? Speechless. Uh, speechless. Yeah. I just, uh, that, that sort of thing. So there has to be a huge exclamation point after each one of those, for me anyway. Yeah. Okay? Don't be so polite. When you're fighting for your life, let's go right up to the bar line, hit our heads, and then in silence you get to act to be the other person. Mm -hmm. Yep. Geliebe, let's start with Geliebe. Geliebe, and Rühren nicht mich an. Habit number one. Und Rühren nicht mich an. Wall. Great. How much time are you allowed to take? As much time as I need. Exactly. And. <laughs> and what, if you have to err on the side of a lot of time or a little time, what, which would be more theatrical? A lot of time. A lot of time. I want to see Dr. Jekyll become Mr. Hyde or Mr. Hyde become Dr. Jekyll, you know, whatever. Yeah. Okay, so really guard against your, your wanting to retard that last phrase, okay? Mm -hmm. Can we do that one more time? Yeah. Yeah. And really take your time. Okay. Please the uh, big drama people here, okay? I created a monster. That's a bad <laughs> I'm worried that these people might think it's intermission. If it takes sure. <laughs> but you know what? I applaud his audacity doing that. I really do. So if we could cut that much in, in half, sure. it would be great. Okay, and going on to the next part of the song, are you speaking the truth? Are you her friend? Is she going to go to a better place with you? I think so. Okay, so why are you so... So, uh, so dour. frightening, frightening. I don't mean to be. She's the one. Oh, you are, my friend. Whoa. It looks like Mount Rushmore or something, you know. <laughs> She's, she is certain that you are evil. And you're saying you're going to sleep like you've never slept before and that you're going to love it and all that. If you believe that. Some people do this like he's, you know, Mephisto. Mm -hmm. But if you want to do the friendly thing, let's do the friendly thing. First, und Rüre. Sure. First get scared. Und rühre nicht mich an. Und rühre nicht mich an.
excuse me. Sorry. Yeah. What's the what's the problem with that? I just ran out of air and then got self-conscious. I wanted to make a joke out of that instead. Okay. <laughs> well, I met James at lunch before I met him in musical uh, in a musical venue. And hi, nice to meet you. Blah, blah, blah. I like low notes. Okay, I chose this song, and he learned the song for today actually, which is great. Um, Christina, when a singer, I don't care if you're doing this or Sondheim or the Messiah or whatever, when you know there's a breath possibility, a breath opportunity in the middle of a phrase for a singer and he sings through that opportunity without breathing, what's in your head now? He's gonna run out and he needs to take a breath and run out? No, there is only one opportunity per phrase. She said he's gonna run out. So, how, how about a sentence that starts with I? When my singer passes the breath opportunity and doesn't take it, I... I need to move forward. I need to save his ass, excuse me, <laughs> okay? So, bin Freund und kommen nicht, some people breathe there after nicht, and he doesn't, right? So that's for me like a five alarm fire, I am gonna make sure like mommy and daddy, that my child is okay over here, okay? And I hear you actually doing the opposite when he gets to Strafen, and he's down to like two molecules of oxygen, like I don't feel you helping. Can you help a little bit? Okay, let's do the death thing, okay? Are you the author of Savior? with a pause on the silence. So both people need to be super intense until they become themselves and the song is over. Right. <laughs> we can do the other one if we don't spend a lot of time on it. Sure. Okay, but before we do that, Christina's gonna play the downbeat of the song we just did. Yep, first note. Great. I'll play something else loud, a different piece, a whole other piece. Or whatever. Okay, come back to this. Try again. Right. And like one time out of a hundred, you'll get the sound you want on the first chord. That's what I get. Mm -hmm. Sometimes not even one, but um, let's go for broke with that, okay? Wonderful, let's do the other song, okay? This is pretty cynical, yeah. not a cheer oh, cheerful yeah. view of the world. Yeah. You're in a boat. Mm -hmm. Small boat. Small boat. Drifting down the, the Donau River. Um, 
It is not the beautiful blue Danube in this case. It is okay. not. Uh, and then through the trees and the shrubbery, I see the ruins of, of castles and towers and walls. What does that tell you by seeing those ruins? It tells me that no matter how much we try to make an impact on the world and to create something that lasts, everything collapses, everything turns to dust. Right. And when you're in this little boat and you look down under the water, you see doom. Yeah. Untergang, the last word he'll sing. Yeah. Wow. to get James some cheerful songs, don't you think? <laughs> like, like tomorrow, because <laughs> you have a great sense of humor, and there are so many songs like this, yeah. by Schubert, by Brahms, by even two by Strauss that are for bass and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I guess it's just part of the territory, but yeah. uh, do try to find some cheerful things with low Setting. notes. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, okay. Lest everybody buy razor blades and, okay. <laughs> cool. this, this really goes very well, I have to say. Um, you almost went to that support less place, yeah, as we began the, sec the last section. Mm -hmm. um, but then the very next phrase, you corrected it and got your body involved. Mm -hmm. So all that, that Marilyn Horn can do, or I can do, or Fred Karam can do, is make you aware of this sensation mm -hmm. when it's not the way it ought to be, 
and then you're on your own because there'll be lots of times when there is nobody around to say, are you using support, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So you, the fact that you fixed it in one breath uh, says a lot of uh, beneficial things going on. Um, do we agree, James, that the music is the vowel? So if, if you, a German, you know, folks, we often have clusters of consonants before the actual vowel. So when he says sadly, or sad, he goes, Trau, and he has to put a TR before the beat. Yes. Do you agree that the vowel is the beat? The vowel is music and it has to match the beat. No. Right. no. The vowel is the, beat, is the beat and the vowel is the music. Oh. And if you're singing in Russian and you have to go <laughs> that is still the, the vowel that you get to is the beat. Okay? So there are many places in here where you want to be expressive and you have to anticipate the consonant in order to arrive with the little boat that's swimming in rhythm, obviously. The waves are making it swim in rhythm. So I, I feel like you wait till it's too late to arrive on time. Sure. Okay? If, if you didn't have anything, sorry, if you had something before it that made it impossible for you to get there on time, then I would be talking to Christina saying, we need to wait for the vowel sound when we, when we play with the singer. But in all these cases, you do have a significant rest before it yeah. to go, Trau, right? Yeah. And you conduct choirs, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you want when you go, don't you want sound? Yeah. Or would you rather have ksh? No. Okay, so that's what I'm asking for, the whole thing. Yeah. That's one thing to say. Mm -hmm. And then very quickly I would say, this is in far fewer sentences than it is in musical phrases. Yeah. There are four times more musical phrases here, vocal phrases, than there are sentences. The whole first section is one sentence. What are you guys going to do about that? Are you going to be victimized by all these rests? No. Well? Auf der Welle. You have to keep that thing going. And you may want to breathe, or you may not want to breathe, but that's your, your problem. It is not Mr. Meyerhofer's problem who wrote the words, OK? Yeah. Um, you, singers, hello. You have to have a way of releasing a phrase that tells your audience that you are not done. Huh? If I say, I am Martin, cats, you could go out for a sandwich after Martin because, <laughs> because I allowed you to. But if I say, I am Martin, and you can tell from the end of the N that I ain't done yet, right? So can you say the poem for us with rests? Yeah. Go ahead. Auf der Wellenspiegel schwimmt der Kahn. Let's make that harder. Let's take more time before schwimmt. Auf der Wellenspiegel schwimmt der Kahn. And? Alte Burgen ragen Himmel an. Great. So it isn't just a question of mental energy. It's also connective tissue over here mm -hmm. to help you do that connecting. And also not diminuendoing the end of a vocal phrase unless you mean to end it. Yeah. Let's see if that makes any difference, OK? Do you like the first entrance, James? Do you find it unusual? I do. Why am, is the miking changing? Yeah. Ben? Hey, Ben? <laughs> way too miked now, way too much reverb, or should I be talking out there? Sorry, it's not your fault. Can we leave it like it was at 3.15? Hello? Yeah. Great. So, I thought this was Schubert, that you were gonna come in where we expect. Da, 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 da. Halfway, halfway through a phrase, right? Yeah. It's like, wow. Do you find that amazing? Yeah. Well, show us. A lot of square songs, if you want to do a square song. Actually, you just did a square song. Yeah. Okay. Vowel on the beat. Thank <laughs> you. 
Give me items. What else? Christina to make just a little bit of a rhythmic nuance on this uh, because now we're getting to the punchline mm -hmm. of the whole thing mm -hmm. that we feel afraid in the boat and and what we see under the water is a mirror of what's going to happen to us yeah. kind of thing and I have a feeling that James could use just a little bit of downtime I'm talking a smidgen don't you think sure Trauriges. okay are you ready to sing oh. okay Start now. Yeah. future, James. Zip. <laughs> cool. Bravo. <laughs> I have to say, singers, when I learn a, a song or an aria, I'm not anywhere near the piano. I'm usually in my kitchen on a, a bar stool at the island in the middle of my kitchen, and I have a pencil and I mark the complete sentences before I ever do anything else. Um, suppose it's a language that I have no dictionary for, there, it's not on leader.net, what am I gonna do? I guess you can't sing that song, right? How do you know when it's a complete sentence, Taylor? Pardon me? Punctuation, what are the three things you will see? Period. Period. No, comma, excuse me, a comma is, is like a mid-air refueling thing. That's not the end of a sentence. Period, exclamation point, question mark, period, the end, that's it. Semicolon is not the end of anything, that's why they call it semi. <laughs> Okay, then you know when you can relax your mind because you're at the end of a, of a sentence, okay? <laughs> the best thing is singing in Spanish because you get the punctuation mark upside down at the beginning of the sentence. Okay, let's do the next song. John Boy, Hi. hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. 
check the suit out, no? I mean, <laughs> he's not even going to sing in Scottish, either. <laughs> OK, we're doing Heimlich first? Yes. OK. Secret invitation. Do you want me to turn the thing on? Yes or no? No. Okay. <laughs> She's a little under the weather, that's why I'm asking her if she feels better today. Good job. Um, tell me about your language, Korean language. Is it a vowel language or a consonant language, would you say? Um, I know zip about this. Vowel, but it's, it's very back, I guess. But it's vowel. It, it is vowel. So, yeah. so you would find it easier or more comfortable or more natural to sing in Italian or French, yes. Spanish, mm -hmm. Latin. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, my mouth is open. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Una portiva la, you know, whatever, OK? Great, I heard you sing that beautiful flower song from Miss Horn. Obviously, French is a vowel language. All the Romance languages are vowel languages. Guess what? English and German are the opposite. OK, so a song like this, especially the first half of it, where you have a million words, I need saliva all over the stage. Okay? <laughs> I need consonants like you have never done consonants. Aufhebe die Funken Schale im Fort zum Mond. Trinke mein Freude und Malet in Herzgesund. 
Yeah? Yeah. Can, can you try that? Yeah. Here we go, without Bina. Auf, hebe die funkende Schale empor zum Mund. What else? Und trinke bei Freude. Yeah, we're not doing any... Und trinke. You know Miss Horn hates that, right? Okay. I hate it too. Und trinke, right here. Und trinke bei Freude mal dein Herz gesund. What else? Und wenn du sie hebst, so winke mich ein. So when he drops his volume, he also drops the percussion of his consonants. Und wenn du sie hebst, so winke mir heimlich zu. Ja? Und wenn du sie hebst, so winke mir heimlich zu. Mir heimlich zu. Mir heimlich zu. Right, let's check this whole area out. It should be smoking. <lacht> ja? <lacht> dann lächle ich. Dann lächle ich. Und dann trinke ich still wie du. Great. Is that possible to sing like that? Yes. All right. <lacht> You heard it. I didn't have a gun to his head. He said it, right? And listen, guys, or singers, guys, whatever. When the voice part is the speed of speech, and this is, you couldn't speak this any faster than you are singing it. It is speech speed. So to stop singing like this and declaim these things. You know what I mean by declaim? Like, decla like singing, uh, like, sorry, like speaking on pitch. Fine, when you get longer notes, then you can sing, you yeah. know, but otherwise just, just blow these syllables out of your face, okay? Auf, hebe die Funke. So where's our first really sung note? Und trinke beim Freude. Wow, I get a whole bar, okay? okay. Otherwise, words, 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 come on. Yeah. Auf, hebe die Funke, die Schale im Furzund. Und trinke beim Freude, mal dein Herz gesund. Strauss opera or Weber opera, any kind of opera in German, it, these roles are long roles and the orchestra is loud a lot of the time, mm -hmm. right? How are you going to deal with that? You cannot just be doing this with your vowels. You have to use your friends, which are percussion, <laughs> to get your voice out. Then when you get a longer note, then you can sing. Okay. Um, does he sound ugly if he does that or clear? Or? I don't know, I'm getting like, mm, I don't know about this. <laughs> uh, this is when a song, when the voice part of a song is as fast as speech. Die Rose, die Lilie, die Taube, die Sonne. You know that song? Yeah. From the Dichterliebe? Mm -hmm. So would you sing, die Rose, die Lilie, die Taube? No, that sounds like Bellini or something, huh? Die Rose, die Lilie, die Taube, die... Yeah? Mm -hmm. Great. So this whole thing that I, where I stopped you now is the first chapter of this song, right? You're at a party, let's, let's leave the diction thing behind for a minute. We're at a party, I'm the woman at the party, you're the guy at the party, let's act this out. Yeah. Don't say it, just do it. By the way, there are 50 people in, in between us, right? Okay, everybody's drinking, catering, you know, whatever. Like these Santa Barbara parties, okay? It's like fabulous, okay? Yeah. Oh, oh, excuse me, what's going on with this glass? Um, we're at the party and... Yeah. yeah. You don't raise your glass? Raise, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he raises his glass. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm over here. And I see that raised glass. What do I do? You're gonna wink, to give me a signal? I'm gonna give you a signal and then we're gonna leave the stage and go outside. Okay, yeah. right, in the garden, <laughs> right. So why do we have to be so secret, John? Um, it's called Secret Invitation, this song, huh? Why so secret? Um, in my interpretation, yes. I think um, so. The my family, I don't know, my friends, like they don't want us to be in relationship. Uh -huh. so, so we're not in a relationship. I mean, secretly we're in a relationship, but people don't know about that. Okay. And yeah, 
and I'm very young and very <laughs> I want to just yeah. <laughs> so are we Romeo and Juliet? Yeah, that's what I because it's this one is a very different poem from your usual Romeo and Juliet song. Mm -hmm. This one we're going to get to a place in the middle where you say we'll go out in the rose garden as we used to do. Nach uh, Altenbrauch, right? As our old custom was. And at that point, Binna stops playing all these fast notes and she begins to play. You would never know that this music was the same as at the beginning, right? So what do you mean, as we used to do? I thought you were Romeo and Juliet. No, okay. Romeo so and Juliet have no history, they just meet. Yeah, right. So we've been dating a long time ago. Right, now you're not dating anymore. Yeah. Okay, you meet at a party. Mm -hmm. Want to? Mm -hmm. Want to? Uh, okay. <laughs> or maybe, maybe they're older than you. Maybe you're married to somebody and I'm married to somebody. Or maybe, I don't know, could be any reason why they are not a couple. But they have experience, they have history together, right? Mm -hmm. What kind of history? Sexy history. Lying down in the rose bushes, despite the thorns, <laughs> is sexy history, <laughs> yeah. okay? So I, this, once you get to the part where you go outside, I need you to really think about what it's like to meet an ex-lover where you know what she wants, she knows what you want. I hope this is not turning off this live streaming thing, but <laughs> this is not, hi, I like you, you wanna go out sometime. This is, hi, I know you, and you know me. That is way different yeah. from all the love songs we have. I mean, who is Sylvia, whatever, all those kind of naive songs. This, there's nothing naive about this. Are you with me on that? Yeah, yeah. Is it okay with you, Vina? Okay. Do you have one X you could think about? Okay, fabulous, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, could we do from Und still gleich mir betrachte um uns das Herz. Okay, this is end of the first section. And be careful, verachte sie nicht zu sehr. We have to put a glottal in the middle of that word. The Germans are very anal about that stuff, okay? Und young love to experienced love, right? Yeah. You guys have to take a little more time with that. Nach yeah. Altenbrauch. Uh, so the subtext of Nach Altenbrauch is we were a great couple together. Mm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It was it really worked for us. Right. Yeah? Um, Dort will ich den Garn erwarten. Think about it first. Dort will ich den
longed for, desired, wished for, right? Mm -hmm. And you are taking that softer the last time you say it, right? <laughs> no, no, when you, be, when you begin it. Oh, okay, yeah. Come to about yeah. as, and you went, as, uh, right? right? And Strauss even says softer yeah. there, and she gets softer. Mm -hmm. And it's not in the poem, it's your choice to say those words again, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Why are we dropping the volume? Let's make a reason. The reason cannot be, this is a long phrase, and if I don't sing softer, <laughs> that can't be the reason. Mm -hmm. You have to disguise that, that technical necessity as an artistic choice. What, what's the, why do we suddenly get softer? Why did James, you weren't out here, but why did James say, don't bother me, don't bother me? Why did he get softer? Because he was so upset that he would be killed, okay? Here, you're the opposite. You're upset that you might <laughs> get together with this girl, right? So, oh come, you longed for night, right? And then you say it the second time. Come to Right, so what did we replace volume with? We cannot just move the volume down. We have to replace it with something else so that the effect on the audience is hot and soft, not cool and soft. That temperature has to go up and the volume goes down. Okay. Yeah, if you want, but I'm just talking about where do you get heat from? Okay. Where do you guys get heat from? Yeah? It isn't here or here or anything else. So, uh, hello, 911. There's somebody in my house. <laughs> right? Did you ever do a stage whisper? Uh -oh. Do you know what we mean by stage whisper? Dana, do you know what I mean by that? When you have to, you know, you don't want the other people on stage to hear you, so you say, Juliet. Yeah? So look how hot that is. Mm. So let's say, O come du wunderbare, normal. O come du wunderbare. Es es now, half that loud and twice as hot. Hotter. Es Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, he, not possible to sing it like that, right? Not possible. Not, not possible. No, of course. He can't even do the song. It's <laughs> impossible. Let's do. Und flex in a deiner Haare. Okay? You want to give him a couple bars? And go. <laughs> It's interesting that the, the piano postlude of this song is not, it, we only can associate it with rose bushes because that's what you sang to more than how, right? And then that's all Dina has at the end. Of it. So I, I really would work even harder to learn how to sing softer but more intense. Yeah. Uh, I love you. I love you. So the consonants are super loud. The intention is super loud. The only thing that isn't loud is the voice coming out of you. Okay? okay. Yeah. Great. And don't sing this like a naive young love song. You should be like 30 years old, 35 years old. <laughs> and you guys had a thing when you were 20. And it was fabulous. Right? <laughs> and now the people that you're partnered with, eh, it's okay. But it's not like it was with this person. You know what I mean? But there are so few love songs about experienced love. Mostly it's, want to get together, you know? This is, let's get together again, okay? We don't have time for two items. I'm sorry. Please forgive me, okay? Oh. 
hope I'm not offending anybody so far. <laughs> You're all still here. Um, we can't just do German, right? Because then I wouldn't be able to talk about the lack of consonants, right? We have to do some French. So Boyoway has a French song with us. Yay, hello. I heard Boya two years ago on the same stage uh, singing her first time through Verdi's Nanetta in Falstaff aria. And Mr. Gallo, do you remember that? Were you here then? Wasn't that unbelievable? It was like, wow, I don't care if I ever hear it again. It's OK. And here you are again. I hope you do it well today. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a long, complicated poem, as you guys see in front of you. Can you boil it down? Can you tell us about this in your words? Um, I think this is me talking about my first kiss and the story that I, when I was a child, I see this image in my dream. And then I, when I see this person, on the street when the sun come across his hair, yeah. I believed there is really a fairy. And it just... Uh, That's wonderful. Because this poet, like a lot of French poets, uh, uses 11 words when he could use one word you know, to say the same thing. They're all gorgeous words, beautiful words but it is a little difficult to get to the heart of the matter of this song, and it's long, so it's important that you, that everything means something to you in your own language. I, I don't mean your, I don't mean Mandarin, but I mean in the way you yeah. make this experience, and I think that's important for, for Kiwa as well. Don't you think so? Okay, hence the title, the light was on your hair, and you looked like this apparition, and Wow, my life changed forever.
beautifully sung. Can I just tell you one? No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. You be careful. Um, be careful of that. That's an augmented chord. It's an A natural, not an A flat. Okay, can you try it once so we don't practice that one? Right. And then the same thing here. Okay, great. Super. Wonderful. So this is a song with, I don't know, 16 different piano parts throughout the song, lots of different vocal challenges and beautiful things to do. Y you all have to appreciate that this is Debussy at the beginning of his composing life when he was knee deep in romanticism. And as he went on and on and on, the range for the singer got smaller, the range for the pianist got smaller. Pretty soon we're dealing with an octave or an octave or two octaves. Now we have a song here with a high C. I mean, he never did that later in his life. He was really, uh, you, you had to kind of copy Massenet, the great romantic French opera composer. You had to kind of copy him to get your career going in France in those days, okay, when Debussy was 20 years old or something like that. So you could drop this into the middle of Manon and you wouldn't know the difference. It's, you know, it, there's just a little bit of impressionism here, but mostly it's romanticism. And we can proceed honoring the voice as we would in a romantic piece. So when you get to the bar of the high C and in that neighborhood, we can take some liberties, some rubatos that we would never dream of doing in later music by Debussy. If you ever do Melisande, I think your voice is too high for Melisande, but if you ever were to do that, you, it would be completely lacking in this kind of self-indulgence that we have available here, okay? Um, so let's work through this. Kiwa, how do you want Boya to sound at the beginning? Debussy tells you how you want her to sound. <laughs> what is rêveuse, what is rêveuse? Dreamy, right. So are you doing everything possible to make her sound dreamy? Okay, I try. Okay. <laughs> the first page is difficult for the piano, no? But the trouble is, if we worry about ourselves and play like a etude in E major, how can Boya go if over here we're getting a toccata, you know what I mean? Can we be really chill, really chill? Okay, so, so if she tries, then you have to be dreamy, huh? You're saying, by the way, the moon was sad. That's not dreamy. <laughs> Come on. La lune va briser. Can we slow this down? playing at this speed? Yeah. Can you play it slower? Yes. Can I hear it? Without Boya? Now that begins to sound like a dream. Yeah. It's supposed to sound like a dream. She should be asleep. <laughs> if, really, if we go, then it's the revolutionary hatred by Chopin or something, come on. <laughs> do what you need to do for you to sound soft and dreamy, whatever you need, okay? okay? And there are no long phrases here, so la, you can do whatever she needs and it will be dreamy. Do you always stand so far from the piano? You don't like her or what's the deal? Okay. <laughs> this is like a little family here, okay? Great. Wait, can you first think about it? Hear yourself, hear your ideal self, and then play. That's dreamy. Great. With this kind of Debussy, are we allowed to do portamento? 
Absolutely, you don't want to accommodate flowers. Whoa, evaporating flowers? What do evaporating flowers sound like? Whoa. <laughs> Seriously, and WC says, ladies, slow down. Uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, has nothing to do with the story. All of that is, is just a gorgeous, dreamy introduction, right? Nothing in there is ever repeated, okay? So we just are beautiful for beautiful sake, okay? Now the curtain goes up and Kiwa plays. Okay, and she just said that was the day of our first kiss. And now we're going to go over to Et j'écris voir la fée. Et j'écris voir la fée. Go ahead. Great. Debussy writes exactly the same music for those two things. First kiss, millions of measures, millions of measures, and I saw the fairy. Right? You, t you explained it very well. You have a kiss, and if you kiss the right person, you see the fairy of your childhood, like the tooth fairy or something. I don't know. <laughs> Do you guys have tooth fairies, you know, where you put money under a pillow and the, when your tooth comes out? <laughs> Whatever fairy is your fairy, okay? So it's really interesting that we have an adult kiss, which then jerks us right back to five years old when the world was perfect, I had no responsibility, and life was fairies, wonderful creatures, right? So it's very important that those two places in the song sound identical, exactly the same. That's why I had you do them right next to each other. Okay, so let's go back to C'était le jour béni. about it. So where you are breathing here after the word lesse makes no sense with words. That even without this and without that, it leaves the gathering of a dream, not leaves <coughs> the gathering of a dream. Why do so many people breathe here? I know there are a couple other sopranos that know this song, right? Hello? At least one, anyway. Why do people breathe here? Because there's a double bar and a change of key. That's just a rule that a publisher has to put a double bar in when he changes the key. It doesn't have anything to do with the, with the words. So steal a breath. Okay? You have to make the word people happy, not just the voice people. Okay? <laughs> Songs are about both things, right? Right. Am I going to get some accents for you? You don't like accents, do you? You like to be beautiful all the time. But we're ODing on beautiful. Come on, give me some accents. Okay. Ma songerie. Ma songerie. 
That's the lowest part of the song for the singer. It's also the, maybe the softest since the beginning. And you say, I'm walking on the sidewalk looking down. Why are you looking down? Why do we look at cracks in the sidewalk? Is this because you just won the lottery? <laughs> I mean, really. Doesn't life suck? Isn't that why you're looking down? Yeah, just right. I don't have a fairy in my life. I don't have a kiss in my life. Why should I look up? It's not worth looking up. And then Kiwa is going to play one note. And that's going to go, when, quand. And we're not supposed to breathe after the word when, are we? We usually say when you show up, right? We don't say when you show up. But there's a rest there, right? Why? Excited? Caught me by surprise. I'm walking around. I'm, mm -hmm. Whoa! Yeah? So you have to make that happen. It starts with you on that F. That's not an F natural. That's a life changing event. Okay? <laughs> Super. Let's do the Barbie for Geredon. Life's bad. She has this and that on every single note. Well, what is that supposed to describe? What is that? Is that a river? No, because rivers are horizontal. What is the fairy doing? Her fingers are like this. What's dripping out of her fingers? No, stars. Stars are stars. falling out of her fingers. Yes. Do you, in your country, do you have flower girls at a wedding? Yes. Where they drop flowers? Yes. Right, so this fairy is dropping stars. It's amazing. So it's star, 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 star. If it's star, 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 <laughs> that is like a drunk flower girl. Forget it. We have to, mm, 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 mm. OK? Yes. And you've been legato for so long, you know? Break up the legato a little bit. It doesn't have to be ugly, it just has to be not cantabile. Mm -hmm. Okay? Can we do uh, And you want to do a soft A natural, right? Passe. How loud are you going to be on the bottom? Shorter. Wait a second. How loud are you? Loud. Yeah. Oh. Uh, How loud? Shorter? No, I didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. How loud on the bottom? She has to do an octave up to a soft A. It, it shouldn't be loud. Really? You're going to sing soft on the bottom and then go for a soft A? Good luck, my dear. Really. Give yourself some working room. Pa. So that even on your worst day of your life, you can still sing softer up there. OK. Kishadis.
just want to, before you applaud this wonderful performance, I just want her to try one other thing. Can we try the last phrase, the toile parfumi, e vowel? Okay. Let's see what that sounds like, okay? It'll probably be terrible, but let's try it. difference for you, Goya? Yeah. What's the difference? Um, First of all, I should ask you guys, can you tell the difference between E and A when she's up there? No. Impossible to tell the difference, right? Or do you know Dupuis le Jour, the aria? So, <laughs> du premier jour, de ton premier baiser. It's supposed to be A, and a lot of people sing, including Miss Fleming, who's going to be here later, sing de ton premier B, Z, and it's like, wow. That had more control. Yeah, right, it just like goes whoop, yeah. right out the top. Whereas A is really dangerous for English speakers. I don't know about uh, Chinese speakers, but um, we go A, we, we do all these weird things with A, but E, as long as it's soft and high, you can't tell the difference. Okay, so help yourself to that. Thank you both very much. Thank you. One more victim, back to German, and his name is Jeffrey with a G. First? Yeah. Okay. You know, um, at least 20% of the Brahms songs are originally for low voice. That's very unusual. I mean, you can hardly find a Bore song or a, or a, a Schumann song that's originally, for a, certainly not a Strauss song very much. So you really have a, uh, what, an inheritance here yes. with Brahms. And we're hearing this, I assume, in the original key, in E flat? Yes. Yeah, great. Jeffrey has a problem, and he's going to go out in the forest and try to feel better.
careful with that last word, Jeff. Um, it's only one R, so it's a flipped uh, R between vowels, and it's right. not having a rap, huh? Hera. Just, um, it's not even an important word, but the Germans always put these wonderful words at the end of the sentence, and um, because you breathe before it, right? So I believe you did. Wrong. Yeah. Well, really worry about the vowel of he being long enough that right. you can't do the R wrong. Okay. There's, no, there's no time to do it yeah. wrong. Okay, so let's work on the fun stuff, not R's and things like that. So would you mind uh, being your own stage director for a second mm -hmm. and walking to the florist the way you feel in the beginning of the song? Sure. I'm just curious to see what, what he looks like. For some reason, he feels really bad. The nightingales are singing, he ought to be happy. Here's a pair of birds in the tree. A pair of birds, that's important, not a single bird. Right, so do you see that? Do you feel you're capturing that? I think everything is all I feel like, you know, I'm gonna get some help in the forest. <laughs> you know? I, I wish that the intro were harder to play. It's not hard to play, technically. And, and so it's very easy for us to kind of uh, you know, and Jeff will come in when he comes in. And I know that's not your intention, okay? But I think we have to have a heavier heart and, and certainly a heavier footstep. Uh, you know when you, what do they say, I have the weight of the world on my shoulders? It's, it's that, that kind of, I'm thinking, mm, da, 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 da. yeah, so it really costs you something. stitch the first note together with the second note. Mm -hmm. I'm getting like B flat, and then my song yes. starts, you know? <laughs> is, is it too low or? Uh, it doesn't have to be, no. I mean, it doesn't have to be loud. This is not Elisir d'Amore. This is not Come Body Day, okay? Any of those things. This is just, I feel really blue. Right. I'm a tenor, so if I can do that, you can certainly do that, okay? okay. Now this would be the slowest it would go, okay? And maybe the truth is somewhere in between. But I have to know, listening to this, that it's expensive for everybody involved emotionally, okay? So let's say you're a cello. Okay, and what is this thing about moving forward, singers? Is this an opera audition where you're showing how big your voice is? Come on, get back here where you belong, okay? Great. <laughs> no, because, listen, there was, a, there was an attack where he did Und die einsame Trainer. We're way out here. There's no consonant. How are we supposed to know when to play that downbeat with you? We're trying to help you. You're in another area code. What is that? Come on. Okay? So, cello. Nice tempo. Good. Already singing. Jeffrey's being tricky. You s start out the song with the long version of the phrase, right? We can, do a t we can do a short phrase or a long phrase. You choose the long phrase. Then you take a breath for the second phrase and you sing two short phrases. Now which church do you go to? The long phrase church or the <laughs> short phrase church? Seriously, I know you to be a, a, a singer who everything is economical and efficient and stuff. So when you breathe after the first phrase, do whatever you have to do to get the maximum amount of breath, including helping over here, and then be careful. Und sein Schlum in das Licht über den Rasen streut. It's like tank, thread a needle, tank, thread a needle, okay? Don't be, don't be too generous, okay? So it's a cello with the mute on. Okay, let's try that again. And Perry, if he passes a breath opportunity, did you hear me scream at yeah. Christina? Okay. 
really, we can't, we can't make this song at the piano, but we sure can ruin it if we're not careful, okay? Chocolate, okay? audience should have no knowledge of what, what's going on over here. How's he doing? Oh, I better take, give him a little more time, whatever. Even he shouldn't know what you're doing. Okay? It's just, gosh, when I do this with Perry, I get through all the phrases. And if he compliments you, just say, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay? All right. Überhüllet. Überhüllet von Laub. Gierit ein tauben bar sein und sucken für mir vor. Can you do that? Okay. So it is the, I'm sure it's the same for string players. Because Brahms writes these phrases that are like express lane highways, right? Mm, I'm gonna move this bow as slow as possible because, but at least when they're at the end, they can go the other way, right? <laughs> when you're at the end, you're at the end, okay? So how about two bars before Yuba? Is that a good play? Or is it two bars? Yeah, two bars. Oh, he's going to see the birds in the tree. Wow, how pretty. What about you? phrase, everybody, and he has to do that phrase twice, and uh, you do it in one breath, that's just wonderful. I personally would advise crescendoing a little bit later, right. so that rint, the last note, is, is everything you want it to be, and that's going to be the same for baped when it comes back. Right. Um, it's a five beat E flat, mm -hmm. right? Could you not open the flower of your voice until the fifth beat mm -hmm. and really make us wait for the, for the bloom there? Yeah. Okay, then you would have more air for the end of the phrase. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do Zucha, Zu und Clever Shot. Am I right? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And why did I say that? There's no consonant. We are like, okay, I hope we're together on this. But at least if you see his face, you have, you have a prayer being together. And when is it, what are you going to do for him before this famous long phrase? He's got three beats rest. Going to do anything? Hmm? I'm going to give him the space. You're going to give him the space to breathe, right. You're going to make sure that this person over here is back to zero in the fatigue department so he can do his best from there to the end, right? Don't you dare play that fourth beat until he's ready, okay? So, Zulcha. <laughs>
Harry, you're slowing down uh, on da da dee da. You're slowing down. Okay. Rinse is the verb. We need to get to the verb. That was a great crescendo, though. They know you're going to crescendo. Just make them wait. It's like, you know, want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? You know? <laughs> Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So let's do it right on that phrase. Okay. Talk about this sentence, this ridiculous run-on <laughs> sentence, okay? So when, what goes with when? Uh, will I. Will I uh, find, you. find you, right. Yeah. Uh, will I find you on earth? So we have van, then we have information, information, information. Will I find you? Yes. Right, and the information in the middle is like gorgeous. Oh, your face is beautiful, you look like morning dew and all that stuff, right? So that's a positive thing. Whereas, wann finde ich auf Erden dich is like, when am I going to find you? So can you bring the structure of this sentence to life? So we have wann and finde ich auf Erden dich sound exactly the same. And in between, it's like, your face is so beautiful and wow. It's two different, two different uh, colors of paint, no? Wann finde ich auf Erden dich? Oh, then I have the Morgen Rot and then I have don't forget there's a little rest before Weltjes, okay? Do da 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 Weltjes, right. So, uh, yeah, two bars. So you're gonna get two sentences for your money here, two different Jeffreys. Just one note and we change. Is she pretty? Is she still pretty? That was suggestive of what I said, but I would go farther with that. Wann wohl lächeln des du? Smiling face. You should see yourself. Hey, smiling face. <laughs> and what are we going to do about this? What are you going to do when you need to do this? You're, you've played. I hope. I'm nervous. You're going to have to go to a hand doctor or something. Come on. So say it for us again. With, like a great actor who knows about German sentences. Yeah, can you change before O? Wann, oh, yeah. Welches wie morgen. Is she pretty? Durch die Seele mir strahlt, finde ich auch. Yeah, So I would suggest, like, I don't know, black and white or red and green, something like that. Frank. It's, it's just the nature of the sentence. Last time, then okay. I won't stop you in that one. Take the time to change after the first note.
little fast. Wait, wait, wait a second. What's his life like for the rest of his life? What does it say? I mean, he turns the page of his, you don't have a planner, it's on your phone. Okay, what does it say on the next page? His life sucks from now on, come on. <laughs> and has he solved anything? He came here to feel better. What does he get for his money? A pair of birds having a blast. I mean, that's terrible. <laughs> Seri I'm serious. You have to put the song to bed much, much slower than that. Hi, Sir D. Bong. Change to minor. Right, he's never going to be any better. He's going to be, he's the type that loved once and that's it. When it's done, it's done. Okay? <laughs> Great, thank you. We're going to have two drums if you want to. It's up to you. Okay. I don't want to send you home to go to a drugstore and buy razor blades and kill yourself. So I'm going to let him sing this very short serenade uh, played by uh, a mandolin solo and strings playing pizzicato. That's all there is, if you want to. There's water over there, too, if you want to. OK. You don't have to read the words. It's just Don Giovanni hitting on someone. It's the same. <laughs> For the 1,004th time, right? OK. Okay, real quick, because I'm going to make the management um, angry if I stay very much past five. What is inappropriate for a serenade? Any serenade sung by anybody. Schubert serenade, Strauss serenade, this serenade. Um, yelling at the person. Yelling at the person. <laughs> okay. Uh, saying something they don't want to hear. Well, no, we can't change the words mm -hmm. and we can't change the notes. So what could you two do with these words or these notes that would be inappropriate for a serenade? What do you want? Don't you want to get into her room? Yes. With her permission? Right, okay. Uh, 
is Bumpy okay? No. Are the accents that I forced Voya to make, are they okay? No, because that doesn't suggest how you would be if you were together right. in bed. Okay, right. I lost another part of the audience just then. Okay, uh, how about labor? I uh, should feel really... Specific. Vocal labor, musical labor, pianistic or mandolinistic labor. No, no way. This sounds way too serious and way too complicated and way too slow. Do you really want to go this slow? Wow, okay. I, I, I haven't, I don't know, I kind of just go ahead, so I, I haven't. You can't just go yeah, with it. <laughs> what? Right. Yeah. Um, have you ever not won somebody you serenaded? Yeah. I don't mean you, Jeffrey. Oh. <laughs> okay, bye. Thank you very much. I know he. I know he has no luck with, you know, whatever. But I'm talking. Right. Okay, um, Leporello was here with his book. We yes. know that you no, have. No, I have never failed. Exactly. Right. So what is what is all this stress and strain? You start the thing knowing you're going to win, right? right. And. How many serenades did Don, did Don Odiris made? He's singing to a maid, right? How many serenades has she received today? Let's make up a number. Zero. Oh, no. Oh, no. 99, whatever. Okay. <laughs> okay. What makes yours successful? Because it's the best. What makes, what makes it the best? It's the most beautiful. It's the smoothest. It's, it's the smoothest. Now you hit on something. Right. It's the least labored. Right. Uh, does that, oh, what turns this lady on? Long phrases or short phrases? Long phrases. Long phrases, because those other serenades, every two bars, those guys have to breathe. That tells me something about how they would be. Okay. <laughs> what else turns the, her on? Double consonants turn her on. Of course they do. Ra no, she is like wild about double consonants. <laughs> uh, La boca, can you imagine? Right. She's like almost out of control. Let's do this together. Yeah. Yep, up, 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 up. And Perry, if you sing a, see a longer note, how does a mandolin hold a longer note or a pizzicato string player? You can't hold a longer note. <laughs> Off. I don't care if it says a whole note. It's a plucked instrument. Okay. Yep, up, up, up. Let's dance a little bit. Huh? Hi. Hi up there. <laughs> Swab. Still listening, wow, you must have done something right. <laughs> okay, great. Now that was the first verse. Now he's going to go in for the kill. What have we not heard Jeffrey do so far? We haven't heard Sop. Right. Show her how you would be if she was fortunate enough to have you in her bedroom. Come on. This is not S&M, huh? This is like gentle. Uh, in her ear. Oh, uh, excuse me. That other guy, he breathed there, that other guy. Now you're just like all the other guys. <laughs> I can do anything. Giovanni, I'm afraid. Go ahead, Barry. I'm afraid. Okay. 